Once a year, the government conducts a census to study the growth of the country, to see how the landscapes have changed, how their population has grown, and how we stand on the international status. A cartographer is an occupation of high importance. Cartographers travel the country in teams of four or five men, collecting data, are well paid, envied, and known to be overly proud of themselves. My father, a cartographer himself, often told me stories about the adventures his team would have. There were stories, however, that remained in my mind as a child and caused me considerable anxiety. For sometimes, when my father was away, he would find that entire stretches of coastline, forests, and lakes had disappeared. They had simply vanished. How was the train ride? Packed holiday rush. How's your mom doing? Uh, she's good. Has your dad talked to you about the festival yet? He never really talks to me about the festival. Actually, my dad never really talks to me about anything anymore. But I guess if all goes well, we could probably have dinner there tonight and maybe go down to the beach after. We could probably see the fireworks from there. Okay. Every spring, the cartographer's report is announced to the public, as it is with great interest that they know how the country has changed and how wonderful it is to live in it. There is an annual celebration when the news is announced, known as the Festival of the Corn. In most parts, it is bigger than New Year's. If the report is good, the celebrations last all night. If the report is bad, one can always expect a large amount of robberies, which lead to fights and riots in the streets. Luckily, this year's report was excellent. The festival, as it turns out, was the greatest disaster in living memory. Come look at these fools. Why are they fools? They're fools. They were born fools and they'll die fools. Am I a fool? No. You're really quite splendid. The news was confusing. The television had said that in spite of the good report, various items had been stolen early in the night. And later, there was a special report on a house in my neighborhood that had completely disappeared. The next day, the Royal Bank building disappeared in front of a silent crowd of people. It took two hours. They stood and watched as a solid structure faded in front of their eyes. One of the last men to be evacuated from the building looked almost translucent, and in the days following, made some name for himself claiming that he had been able to see other worlds, layer upon layer, through the fabric of the here and now. As the weeks progressed, more and more buildings began to disappear, causing a record-breaking number of riots. Mobs of crazed people broke into office buildings, throwing desks down the stairs and hurling typewriters out of the windows. There were rumors circulating of people who had dematerialized, but it generally wasn't believed until it was announced on every newsstand and radio station. After a week of 12 people disappearing, there were a number of organizations coming up with theories as to why this was all happening. Theory 1. The world is merely a dream dreamt by a god who is waking after a long sleep. When he is properly awake, the world will disappear completely. Theory 2. Prolonged exposure of the world to the sun has made it sensitive to light. Theory 3. The world is disappearing due to the sloppy work of the cartographers and census takers. There were protests at City Hall to have a new census taken, before matters got worse. John. John. I need to fill you in on what's happening. The world, John, is exactly like the human body. And it has its own way of defending itself against anything that either threatens it or is unnecessary to it. The World Bank obviously constituted some threat to the world. That's why it disappeared. And not because some damn fool god was waking up and rubbing his eyes. 
I don't believe in God. I know you don't believe in God. You've told me many times. Humanity is the only God I know. And if humanity doesn't need something, it will disappear. People who are not loved will disappear off the face of the earth. We exist through the love of others. That's what it's all about. Do you get what I mean? Yes. I get what you mean. But do you really? I wonder, John. Once we can love each other again, we will stop disappearing. It's a hard lesson to be learned, but effective. John. I've always looked after you, John. Ever since you were